जनिक और नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज द वेर गाइड कॉन्सेप्ट हियर द थिंग इज सो हियर वी विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम ओनली हियर सो गेटिंग इन टू द वेर गाइड कॉन्सेप्ट इज सम वॉट टाइम टेकिंग प्रोसेस सो इट इज एन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ the uniform plane waves it is some advancement of the uniform plane waves only so if you know the uniform plane waves concept here and this that concept will be used here but here we will use the wave guides concept for propagating the wave for propagating the wave in a required direction in general the waves will be in general the practical waves will be dispersive in nature the practical waves will be dispersive in nature okay so dispersive in nature means so in the uniform plane waves the the uniform plane waves the elect um, the propagation only in 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 z and z direction only okay h z comma t you will get like this in uniform plane waves but for the dispersive waves what are the practical waves existing in the space they will be always traveling in all the directions they will be traveling in all the directions like this they will travel in x direction y direction and z direction and they are also see in the uniform plane waves we will be having the traveling only in z direction and electric field is directed in x magnetic field is directed by propagation is in z that is the concept we have learned in uniform plane waves but the practically it is not possible in the space so the waves will travel as its own okay so that means what the wave can travel in x y z and it is a function of time it represents it is harmonic in nature and also they will be directed in x y z like this x y z like this so this is the meaning of this dispersive waves so why we use this wave guides means so to confine all these waves into a required direction to confine all these waves into required direction means so how to confine this kind of waves suppose i want only the waves only in x direction i will block remaining y and z direction with some suitable boundaries okay so what are those suitable boundaries so i don't want the propagation in remaining other two direction suppose i want to make it propagate only in z direction so if i want to propagate only in z direction what i have to do i have to do i have to conf i have to restrict in these two directions x y x and y okay so to restrict that what i have to do so i have to make some arrangement and that arrangement is made by these wave guides so the wave will be guided in the required direction so that is the meaning of this wave guide so what is the meaning of this wave guide suppose if the wave is traveling in all the directions means if the wave is traveling in all the directions means so it is traveling like this it is let us suppose this is x this is z but i if i want to make it see we know this is x and this is z and this is y okay so what i have to do i want the propagation only in z direction so i have to confine in all the directions this side y side and x side also i have to let the wave to be propagated in the z direction so for that what i have to do i have to do some arrangement that arrangements are called as these wave guides i don't want in these directions the propagation so this arrangement is called as it is are the wave guides okay what is this arrangement it is a perfect conducting sheets perfect conducting sheets if i put a perfect conducting sheet what happens if you give the em wave here what happens it will travel like this <coughs> because the em wave will be reflected from the perfect conducting material so it will be reflected and here also there is a perfect conducting material it will be reflected 
reflected reflected so it will goes to it will go to the required direction even though it is a zigzag path it goes to the the required direction similarly this like like this also so it is the final path okay so like this we will use this wave guides here so here the distance from here to here is called as the guide separation and there are two types of wave guides here suppose only two dimensional confinement only this side and this side only two plates are there then they are called as the parallel plate wave guides first one is the parallel plate wave guides parallel plane wave guides or parallel plane wave guides parallel plane wave guides second one is a rectangular wave guide rectangular wave guide so what is this parallel plane wave guide means in the top one wave guide will be there one conducting sheet will be there in the bottom one conducting sheet will be there remaining all are open okay so in this way we can restrict in the required direction depending on the wave and depending on the direction we will use this kind of parallel plane wave guide or rectangular wave guide so now this is called as the depth, the separation between these two these two plates are called as this is a guide separation it is called as the guide separation and here you will give some frequency here already it is what it is a time harmonic source frequency means what you have to give some time harmonic source this time harmonic source is fed to this wave guide then only it will generate an em wave into this we know the time harmonic source is must for generating the em waves everywhere it may be transmission line or it may be in the free space or it may be in the wave guides the time harmonic source is must so now it should maintain some operational frequency f it should maintain some operational frequency f and what must be the operational frequency there must be some minimum frequency must be maintained to make the propagation happy okay if you give whatever the frequency you need it it won't accept the wave to be propagated into the wave guide okay the wave to be propagated into the wave guide you have to give some minimum amount of the frequencies that minimum amount of frequency is called as the cutoff frequency okay the cutoff frequency the cutoff frequency of this suppose if i talk about the parallel plane wave guide okay i am talking about the parallel plane wave guide for the parallel plane wave guide the cutoff frequency will be fc is equals to mc by 2a where m is equals to mode where m is equals to mode it may zero sorry it may be 1 2 3 4 like this okay m stands for the mode and 1 equals to first mode second mode third mode fourth mode fifth mode like this c is the light velocity it c is the light velocity 3 into 10 power 8 a is the already we know it is the guide separation so this is mc by 2a here c is equals to what 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second okay so c means it is the light velocity has to be taken while the the space between these two conducting materials is a free space then only you can take this one as c suppose if any other material is is filled in between these two then we have to take the material constants also into the consideration so if you take the material constants also into the consideration what we have to observe the fc will become m into vp phase velocity phase velocity divided by 2a so you have to use this one or this one okay you have to use this one or this one so until unless you mention you shouldn't use this if you mention means you have to use this if it is not mentioning means you can take it for the the free space now now what happens here is 
and as soon as if you see if you give this much frequency only it is the cut off frequency that means to make the propagation happy the f must be greater than fc for for propagation if f less than fc what happens what is f f is the operating frequency the f is the input frequency okay input source frequency suppose if f is less than fc there is no propagation okay suppose f is fc there is no propagation now we will define what is f and fc okay and how it will be okay suppose if you take this one as the wave guide I am talking about the parallel plane waveguide because the question is asked about the parallel plane waveguide, right? So it is the A, let us suppose it is 0, it is 0, it is A. Now one time harmonic source is fed here, okay? It is a source with the frequency. Now it will go like this, but if we give the frequency f less than fc what happens the wave will not enter into this okay the wave will not enter into this if you give f is equals to fc let us suppose this is the final wave propagation it is the z axis it is the z path it is x it is x equals to a it is x equals to 0 okay by applying the boundary conditions everything you will get the cutoff frequency expressions here f equals fc here this is called as the uh, th this is called as the wave will be going like this right it is the final propagation okay the angle made by this the angle made by this axis is called as theta the angle made by this made by the wave with respect to this final path is called as the theta okay so now what happens here is if theta is equals to 0 what happens it will move like this happily it will move okay suppose if f equals to f is here the theta is defined as here the theta is found by using the conditions only here theta is equals to sin inverse of fc by f you have to notice this this is called as the wave angle or tilt angle the wave angle or tilt angle so this is the thing you have to maintain so the wave, the wave angle is this one with respect to the wave guide okay now what happens if f equals to fc so if f equals to fc this will become what theta is equals to sin inverse of fc by f it is 90 degrees sin inverse of fc by 90 degrees 90 degrees means what the wave will be looking like this suppose if this is the wave guide how the wave will be the wave will be let us suppose this is a it is zero the wave will be let us suppose this is the axis the wave is making an angle with the this is 90 degrees this is the wave will be projected like this the wave will not be in an inclined version if it is an inclined version only, it, there, is a, there is a chance to reflect like this. It can move forward. But if it is going like this means, it always it will be, the wave will be like this only. Okay. The wave will be like this only. It will be reflected from here and it will come here. It will reflect it from here, it will go here. So like this, it will oscillates between the two boundaries. So that's why the minimum frequency is f is equal to at f equals to fc also the wave will be like this if f is greater than fc then what happens the theta will be less than 90 if theta if fc f greater than fc what happens this value is less than this one means automatically you will get a less than 90 value here if less than 90 means this is 90 less than 90 means this one 
automatically it will move forward. So that is the concept you have to learn here. So in this given question and he asked about the first mode and second mode and third mode. Already we have seen what is the modes. M equals to 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. Okay. So if you use this concept here, what he has asked? Calculate the wave angle means theta. If they are operated in first and third mode. In the given question, he has given A is equal to what? 2.5. Guide separation is given. It is what? It is for the parallel plane wave guide. Okay. It is the parallel plane wave guide. So A is given 2.5 centimeters. Now what is the operational frequency? The operational frequency is F is given. This is 22 gigahertz. Okay. 22 gigahertz is given. Now, now what would be the cutoff frequency? Now we have to find the theta. Theta is what? Theta is including the cutoff frequency also. So sin inverse of Fc by F. To find Fc, what we have to find? Fc is the cutoff frequency of this parallel plane wave guide is Mc by 2a. So whether we have to take C or Vp depends on the question. He did not mention anything means. So you can take it one as 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. Now what about this Mc? M value. The M represents the first mode. Means M is equal to 1. Third mode means M equals to 3. Like this. So from this, from Fc1, let us suppose the cutoff frequency of the first mode is 1 into 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second divided by here it is 2 into 2.5 into centimeters right here a is given in centimeters so i can write this can be is equal to 2.5 into 10 power minus 2 into 10 power minus 2 this is mc this this will be equals to what 3 by 5 this is 10 power 8 10 power 8 this will be 10 power 10 right 10 power 10 right so what is fc by f so here you will get so 10 power 10 so fc by f how much it will be fc divided by fc1 fc1 divided by f how much you will get so this will be 3 divided by 5 into 22 It is 10 power 10 divided by 10 power 9. So 10 power 10 divided by 10 power 9 is this one. So this will be equal to what? This is 2. This will be 6 divided by 22. Fc by F1 is 6 divided by 22. So what you will get here? We got the Fc by F1. Now we will get the tilt angle for the first mode. Okay. The tilt angle for the first mode is theta theta is equals to sin inverse of fc1 divided by f fc1 divided by f sorry this is f operating frequency okay we found this one and this one take this so this is equal to how much this is sin inverse of we got 6 divided by 22 this is for the first mode So what is the operating frequency? The operating frequency is what? This one. So I can write this one as how much? This is, uh, if I write, this is 6 gigahertz. You can take 110 outside and if it is divided by 5, it will be 2. This is 6 gigahertz. The operating frequency for the first mode is 6 gigahertz. Okay. For the third mode, what happens? For the third mode, what happens Fc? Fc3 is equal to 3 into what? 3C divided by 2A. So this will be what? It is just like what? It is 3 into Fc1. So this will be 3 into 6 gigahertz. 6 gigahertz. This will be 18 gigahertz. That is the thing you have to notice. If the first mode operating frequency is known, then the nth mode operating frequency can also be known. Okay, that is the advantage of finding the first mode frequency. So this is the third mode cutoff frequency, 18 gigahertz. 
So from this, what is the tilt angle? So sine inverse of FC by F. What is FC? 18 gigahertz divided by F is what? 22 gigahertz. Okay. So like this, you have to find the tilt angle for these kind of questions. So I think the concept is clear for you. So you have to revise all those things. Okay, how the cutoff frequencies are made and how the cutoff frequencies are calculated and what is the tilt angle and how the waves are oriented. If the cutoff frequency is less than the, if the operating frequency is less than the cutoff frequency. So this is the question. Actually, you will get a just very easy questions from the wave gates. Okay, the concept may be somewhat difficult to understand while you are having the classes. Okay, so we will make it simple in the uh, full course. Okay, we will make it very simple in the full course because we will be having a lot of problems. We will be having, we will be solving a uh, lot of problems. Okay, so by that you can clear your concept in whatever the so we will solve number of problems in the full course so, so for that no problem but here there is a time limit so that's why we are discussing some of the important and uh, some concept developing problems only okay so like this this is the wave and tilt angle now welcome to Janik. so this is the next question what the question is it's a parallel plane waveguide has an operate, operational frequency of 40 gigahertz and has a guide separation of dash if the cutoff frequency of 36 gigahertz operated in the third mode and it is operated in the third mode okay the cutoff frequency is given and it is operated in the third mode is mentioned okay we have to find the guide separation we have to find a it's a parallel plane waveguide you have to notice that and what is has given fc f is given what is f f is equals to what 40 operational frequency 40 gigahertz is given so now what is the cutoff frequency the cutoff frequency is the cutoff frequency is given as 36 gigahertz and it is given that this 36 gigahertz is for the third mode so that means he has given fc3 he has given that fc3 so for the third mode what is the operational frequency the what is the cutoff frequency we know that it is equal to mc by 2a what is m m is equals to third mode means m is equals to 3 is given so i can write 3 into c c by 2a so from this what we can write so this is equivalent to so 36 36 into 10 power 9 is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 2 into a and this will be it is equivalent to what it is 12 this will be cancelled and from this here is equals to a is equals to you will get 1.25 25 centimeters nearly okay here we will get a is equals to 1.25 centimeters so this is the answer for this see finding the answer is simple but here you have to notice one thing suppose in the given question suppose in this given question what is the cutoff frequency of the first mode what is the cutoff frequency of the first mode? So how can you find the cutoff frequency of the first mode? Already we know FC3. FC3 is equal to how much? 3 into FC1. So this is the relation. You have to notice this. So what is the cutoff frequency of the first mode? First mode is equal to FC1 is equal to FC3 divided by 3. So here 36 divided by 3. This will be 12 gigahertz. It is the 12 gigahertz for the first mode. Okay. So this is the 12 gigahertz for the first mode. The meaning of this 12 gigahertz is. See the frequency. This is the frequency. Okay. If the frequency is greater than 12 gigahertz. 
for the first mode if the mode 1 okay so the if the this parallel vein is to be operated in the first mode the minimum frequency you should maintain is 12 gigahertz okay so for m is equals to 1 what happens for m is equals 1 f must be greater than 12 gigahertz okay that means what this implies means what f greater than 12 gigahertz suppose if m is equals to 2 what it will be m is equals to 2 suppose if the mode to be operated in the second mode m equals to so fc2 is equals to what 2 into fc1 like this 2 into fc1 so what is fc1 already we got fc1 is we got so the f should be greater than 24 gigahertz you have to notice that if m equals to 3 it is f is greater than 36 gigahertz okay the minimum frequency for each and every mode will be changing okay suppose if i am using if i am using the 24 gigahertz if i want to operate in the third mode if i am giving the 24 gigahertz as the operational frequency if i am giving the 24 gigahertz as the operational frequency if i want to operate in the third mode it will not operate okay so it will not do anything so there is no operation takes place there is no wave will be there there is no wave to be wave will be propagated in the wave guide why you have taken this frequency this is 24 gigahertz so this is only suitable for only this is also not suitable for second mode also for the second mode this is the cutoff frequency you have to cross this 24 gigahertz then only it will enter into the waveguide so if it is not suitable for second mode also so how can it be suitable for the third mode it cannot be used for the higher order mode but if i am using this 36 gigahertz as the operating frequency greater than 36 gigahertz the operating frequency can i operate in the second mode yes definitely i can operate the waveguide in the second mode because this 36 is greater than this 24 happily the wave will be operated in the second mode similarly if i if my operating frequency is 36 gigahertz then the same waveguide can be operated in the first mode also so the meaning of this one is what if we are connecting the mode in the higher order modes so automatically the waveguide is set to be connected in the lower order modes also okay so that means what you can operate the same waveguide for the lower order modes because already you crossed the some cutoff frequency for that mode okay the lower order mode will be will uh, the lower order mode less than this mode can be operated happily okay that is the thing suppose if i am using some 40 gigahertz of operating frequency now what is the F, uh, fc3 f3 fc3 is 36 gigahertz 36 gigahertz if i am using the operating frequency as f then this can be operated in the third mode and this 40 gigahertz is greater than this one also so it can be operated in the second mode and this can be operated in the first mode also suppose if you are taking the 12 gigahertz suppose if you are taking the 12 gigahertz as the operating frequency if i want to move if i want to operate the waveguide in the second mode it is not possible okay so that is the thing you have to understand about these kind of modes of propagation okay if any mode is operated in the higher order mode that means it can be operated for the lower order modes also
So like this. Suppose this is M. Fc is equals to Mc by 2A. Suppose what if, if M is equals to 0? We were talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, right? 1, 2, 3. But we didn't talk about M. So what is Fc is equals to? 0. So that means what? Fc is equals to 0 means no cutoff frequency. Okay? No cutoff frequency. So what is no cutoff frequency means what? What is no cutoff frequency? So the waveguide, see if you observe this, this is the waveguide. This is the waveguide. So we know what is the angle? This theta representing what? This theta means the angle between the wave to the guide axis. It is called as the guide axis. It is guide axis. So the angle between the wave with respect to the guide axis is called as the wave angle. Now if Fc is equal to 0, what will be the tilt angle? Tilt angle is equal to sin inverse of Fc by F. So this will be what? Sin inverse of 0 is 0 degrees for this. So the wave will be is theta degrees. Theta is equal to 0. The wave will go like this. The wave will go like this. So happily it will move. Okay. So that means if any wave is operated in the first mode, it can be operated in the zero mode. That zero mode is called as, it is called as, this wave is called as, this is TEM wave. This is called as TEM wave. That means transverse electromagnetic wave. Transverse electromagnetic wave. So the transverse electromagnetic wave having no cutoff frequency. It has no cutoff frequency. Okay? No cutoff frequency. That means it can allow the TEM wave. Means it is having no cutoff frequency. Means it is having a frequency from 0 to infinity. It can allow all the frequencies. This mode will allow all the frequencies from 0 to infinity. So from this, what can you understand from this entire discussion? This entire waveguide can be operated as the high pass filter. High pass filter. Why it is high pass filter? Because it will allow only the frequencies greater than the cutoff frequencies. So we can, okay, we can notice that it is just acting like a high pass filter. Okay, acting like an high pass filter, but it cannot be called as an high pass filter. Okay, so it will allow only the frequencies greater than the cutoff frequencies for the given mode okay so this is what the entire discussion for this this one now you will be having a, a very great concept in this um, parallel plane waveguide is the phase velocity concept here the phase velocity concept here you will get that is here the phase velocity here the phase velocity is equal to Vp for the parallel plane waveguide. This will be is equal to this will be is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. It is the sorry. The phase velocity. Okay. Here you will get the phase velocity Vp is equal to 3 into 10, 8 meters per second. This will be is equal to C divided by cos theta. C divided by cos theta. This is called as the phase velocity. It is what? Phase velocity. What is cos theta? Theta we know. It is sin inverse of Fc by F. Then cos theta is equal to 1 minus root over 1 minus sin square theta. So this is called as the C divided by cos theta. What is C? It is the 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. So it will be having a value from minus 1 to plus 1. Okay. So maximum value is 1. If theta is equal to 0, what happens? If theta equals to 0, Vp is equal to C. If theta 0 means what? For the TEM wave. So Vp is equal to C. 
so you should know that tm wave will be having for the tm wave will be having the phase velocity is equals to the light velocity because what for theta is equals to 0 for theta is equals to 0 if theta is 0 means what cos theta is 1 vp is equals to this one for the tm wave the vp is equals to the light velocity so with it with this we can also go forward so what we can say it is the maximum value of the phase velocity for the tm wave so whenever so it is the minimum value of the phase velocity okay suppose suppose if theta is increased suppose if the theta is increased what happens if theta is increased means let us suppose if theta is 90 degrees if theta is 90 degrees means theta increased means like this if theta is 90 degrees means this one if theta 90 degrees means what about this cos 90 cos 90 is 0 so cos 90 0 means vp is equals to what c divided by 0 this would be infinity that means as you move as you increase the theta that means as you increase the theta what happens as you increase the theta that means if you increase the frequency what happens the theta will be increasing understand here not frequency c if you increase the theta what happens if you increase the theta here the theta means what the cos theta will be what if theta equals 90 degrees it will maximum that means what we can say here vp vp is greater than c so this is only the possible value it is the minimum value of theta as theta increases what happens the vp also will be increasing greater than c so that is the thing so if theta equals zero only it is both are equal if theta increases means c divided by something is equal to this one something is less than one is equals this one means what we can say that if anything is if anything is divided by less than one it is equal to one means what this one is greater than this one so like this so you have to notice this vp is greater than c you take any value if anything is divided with less than one value suppose if you go like this means automatically this value will be less than one if it is less than one then automatically vp greater than c so this is the thing you have to notice so always the phase velocity is greater than the light velocity okay now one more concept is developed here here vp is equals to here the phase velocity this is for the phase velocity suppose we know see in the wave gate there are number of waves will be traveling in the wave gate then we should understand that when the number of waves are traveling in the wave gate then we cannot say they are they are traveling with the same speed okay so there will be the non-linearity in the phase also while they are traveling with the different phase different speeds so depending on the the velocity automatically the phases also will be changed so that so that's why we cannot go for the the phase velocity now then we should then we should concentrate this see we should concentrate on some other velocity that velocity is called as the the group velocity it is called as the group velocity it is group velocity is given by c into cos theta it is called as c into cos theta so from this what we can write if theta is equal to 0 vz equals to c if theta equals to 0 vz equals to c if theta increases means what happens this will be less less than 1 if anything is less than 1 is multiplied with this means automatically the vz will be less than c so that means vz is group velocity is less than the light velocity the group velocity is less than the light velocity while you are calculating the average speed of all the rays all the waves automatically the average speed will be less than the light velocity okay 
so that is the thing you have to notice here so from this these two if you from this one and this one you can write bp into bz is equals to c square so this is very important relation in the wave gates okay and there also there is one more concept here and this is used for the what the this is also used for the rectangular wave gates also whatever we are using here so here there is one more concept the intrinsic impedance of the wave gate the intrinsic impedance of the wave gate is this is 120 pi okay this is 120 pi suppose if it is 120 pi this is the intrinsic impedance of the wave gate suppose if it is suppose if it is operated in the TF mode okay this is there are two modes will be existing okay suppose if it is operated in the T mode this is called as the TM mode okay first of all write for TM mode suppose we will define the intrinsic impedance there exist two types of modes here TE for so the TE will be is equal to 120 pi divided by what the intrinsic impedance of the T mode operation transverse electric wave this 120 pi divided by cos theta and it will be for transverse magnetic mode magnetic wave this will be 120 pi into cos theta okay for tem mode this will be 120 pi only because observe this if tem mode what is theta theta is 0 if theta 0 means 125 here also if t is theta is 0 means what tm for the tm mode theta is 0 theta 0 means 125 ohms so this is one more important relation you have to notice so beyond this there is no chance for him to ask the questions so you have to concentrate on each and every concept so you go to the any notes or any textbook okay any material you solve all kind of problems related to the syllabus okay automatically you you will be having some idea okay because there is a, a time limit i am not able to teach all the things in this short period of time okay i hope you are getting this okay so this is one more important thing you have to notice next here the next concept is rectangular wave gates it is also similar to the rectangular wave gates <laughs> it is also similar to the parallel plane wave gates only but here we will take a rectangular box instead of using a parallel plane let us suppose this is z here we will use a rectangular plates like this okay it is a rectangular box let us suppose this is x equals to 0 this is x equals to a this is one plate this entire one is one plate like this kept like this let us suppose this is y is equals to a this is y is equals to 0 so this is one more plate let us suppose this is z and x <coughs> here the wave is connected like this with the frequency here also the wave goes and into this so it is just like a rectangular box it is just like the box like this it is just like the box like this okay the wave gets will be this much only okay this much um, the already we have seen in your laboratory micro laboratory okay so these are called as a rectangular wave gates in between there is a halo in between there is a halo okay to make the wave to be propagated and this might be filled with some 
this entire hall of space might be filled with some free space or maybe some dielectric constant depending on the requirement okay so these are called as the rectangular wave gates here there is a two dimensional restriction is used and the wave is confined into the one direction only so like this here also the cutoff frequency is defined here the cutoff frequency is equals to c by 2 into root over m by a whole square plus n by b whole square and this is a very important relation here c by 2 root over m by a whole square plus n by b whole square okay this is where c is equals to 3 into 10 power 8 light velocity suppose if it is filled with any other material okay then the light velocity becomes the phase velocity then it can also be said as vp divided by 2 root over m by a whole square plus n by b whole square what is a and b it is a here it is b okay the width between the y axis plate in the direction of y the uh, the gate separation is b in the direction of x the gate separation is a okay what is m and n m and n are the modes m and n are the modes okay suppose for te 10 what it will be fc is equals to mc divided by 2a c by 2a directly if you put m equals 1 n equals 0 this is called as and this is called as suppose if it te 10 te 0 1 then what it will be fc is equals to for fc is equals to c by 2b and either of this can be called as dominant modes it is called as dominant mode either t10 or t01 is called as the dominant mode so what is meant by this dominant mode means the frequency the 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 waveguide which is having the mode which is having a low cutoff frequency is called as the dominant mode if you take any other value of m and n this will give greater than the c by 2a value you take any value other than 1 comma 0 suppose if you put 1 and 1 if you put a and b values definitely it will greater it will give greater than c by 2a or c by 2b value so dominant mode means what the mode with low cutoff frequency least cutoff frequency so by observing this either of these two modes will be having dominant mode why either of this means suppose if a is greater than b suppose if a is greater than b means what happens then te will be having lesser cutoff frequency so te 10 is the dominant mode suppose a less than b means this is less than this one if b is greater than a means what happens this value will be less than this value <coughs> so this is called as te then te 0 mode suppose a less than b means te 0 1 is the dominant mode understand so now in this if any mode other than these modes are not set to be dominant mode suppose what if if m is equals to n equals to 0 if n and r 0 means fc is 0 okay if m is 0 n is 0 means fc is 0 that means te or tm 0 0 these modes cannot be find anywhere so that means and that there if m is 0 means that is tem wave here you cannot put m0 n0 both at the same time that means the wave will not be existing for this m and m values there is no cutoff frequency is zero that means the wave will not be existing for that if you if you write the t and tm wave equations you will get that concept there okay so so till now in the gate examination he will be asking the problems on this this expression only okay there is some twisting in this expression so you have to note that okay what you have to note that what is the dominant mode 
okay what will be the dominant mode if a greater than b or b greater than uh, a less than b so these are the thing you have to notice okay and one more important thing is here tm 10 or tm tm 0 1 this is this mode is also not be possible to connect the minimum mode in the transverse magnetic wave mode will be this is tm mode tm11 is connected the minimum first mode tm01 tm10 cannot be connected that means te te m0 te 0n is possible but tm 0 n or tm m0 is not possible okay these are called as evanescent modes okay so like this you will be having this is the history so you have to concentrate on this kind of uh, this expression okay the same um, what what are the uh, things for the phase velocity and the group velocity and the wavelength and the what about that um, the intrinsic impedance everything is same as that of the parallel plane waveguide okay okay thank you so you solve some of the questions on this um, wave guides and the, the, from the wave guide definitely they will ask minimum two questions okay one, one, one more question and one two more question so that's why you have to concentrate on this wave guide and they will be very easy okay okay thank you very very much i hope you understand and you are getting something if there is any thing if there is any doubt is there please comment on the comment box okay thank you very much and one more time welcome to jenik <laughs>